Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. Vasan Bharat reads riot actor and Kamla Prasad Bissessar as he campaigns hard for UNC leadership. This story takes the lead in our 992nd edition of Caribbean Perspective for Tuesday, 24th November 2020. Details after this important message. The hurricane season is now upon us, so we as Caribbean people need to remember to think safety and be prepared. Avoid venturing outside during a storm or hurricane, especially if there are strong winds. Rooftops and other debris are often blown about and can cause great damage. Welcome back. The opposition leader's attempt to trade legislative support is putting the lives of citizens at risk. Thoughts of her leadership rival, Vasant Parat. The opposition offered support for the anti-gang bill in exchange for proclamation of procurement legislation. Here's what the man eyeing the seat of political leader of the United National Congress thinks. That is horse-trading people's lives. In other, on the one hand, you are saying, it's good enough for me to support, but the, pre- the, the quid pro quo is, you must proclaim the, anti- the procurement bill, the pro- procurement legislation. That, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, regrettably, is putting the lives of citizens of Trinidad and Tobago at stake. At a media conference held in El Socorro on Sunday, the UNC leadership aspirant for St. Barra says the opposition failed to articulate why it did not support the anti-gang bill in the lower house on Friday. 19 opposition MPs abstained from voting. It is not enough to simply say that there are other laws which deal with criminal activity. Anti-gang legislation targets gang membership gang culture and gang proliferation. The philosophy behind the legislation is to break up these gangs. He called this the perfect example to demonstrate the need for UNC party reform. And he says the UNC's demise was due to feeble and frail leadership and a lack of strategic planning. Mr. Barra for the second time issued this call to the woman under whose leadership he previously served. You said in your last speech, that you want to meet me in the guile. Well, this is the guile. It's out here in the real world. So I challenge you for the second time, come and debate me for the leadership. In your world, in your own words, manos y manos. He expressed concern over the integrity of the election and the abuse of party machinery to satisfy the desire to hold on to power. The UNC Facebook page and the Monday Night Forum has been used shamelessly to campaign on behalf of Mrs. Bissessa and her team. These are party forums. I need to reiterate and reinforce. These are party forums. They are for the benefit of the party and not meant to advance the interest of any one individual. Mr. Barath also expressed concern over Mrs. Bissad Bissessa's alleged involvement in the crafting of the UNC election manual and the existence of five polling stations in Separia. Urvashi Tawari Rupnarain, TV6 News. Meanwhile, Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley announced he will instruct the head of the public service to ensure no Christmas parties are allowed this Christmas season. Elizabeth Williams of TV6 News has more. Dr. Rowley said good sense must prevail in the matter, as instances of misconduct will not be allowed in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. While we acknowledge the birth of Christ and have been doing so for centuries, in 2020, let us do it without partying. And therefore, there is to be no Christmas celebration in the public sector. Health Minister Terence D. Alsing urges the private sector to follow suit. I want to reach out with this platform to all chambers of commerce to ask their membership not to have Christmas parties. I have spoken to my own peers at the Ministry of Health. We will be having no Christmas functions at the Ministry of Health. Dr. Rowley said while he is aware of villas booked out in Tobago for the Christmas season, as Trinidadians are traveling to Tobago, he is pleading for good behavior, as this could determine 
whether children are able to return to physical school come January. And if we're not careful, the Christmas cultural responses could, if we are irresponsible, put us in a position where the January numbers could say to us, no school. With all the possible repercussions of another COVID spike in mind, the government's urging remains a quiet Christmas for all. I want to reach out to all religious leaders, tell your flocks, your devotees, your jamats, to avoid family gatherings this Christmas season. Every leader of an NGO, every member of parliament, all 41 members of parliament, everyone who has influence over people, to urge those who look up to you for leadership that this Christmas ought to be a holy Christmas, but a quiet Christmas. Elizabeth Williams, TV6 News. Weapons were seized and suspected gang members arrested when police swooped on what is called a Zessa party in Kelly Village. The event attracted more than 250 party goers who contravened several of the COVID-19 restrictions and will now have to face the music this time before a magistrate. Here is a story. Steamy part two got a little sticky this morning when the TTPS swooped down on a warehouse on River Branch Trace, Kelly Village this morning, where according to them, a Zessa party was being held. This eyewitness video captures the moment SORT officers stormed in to find some 250 people who had been invited to the secret location, which was only revealed hours before the event. The party is in violation of public health regulations, which prohibit the gathering of more than 10 persons in a public place, and many attendees were caught on camera not wearing masks or socially distanced. Police footage shows weapons abandoned by some party goers. It's a well-organized event, according to police, with a cash bar, which is a privilege restaurateurs and casinos are denied. Among those detained for hours were minors and persons known to affiliate with gangs in the community. Some were taken into police custody, but by the time all cameras got there, mid-morning, persons still swarmed the streets. An after-party of a different kind for steamy two attendees. Sources say some persons tried to jump the 10-foot wall surrounding the warehouse to evade police but suffered injuries and were later detained. Some seemed unmoved by the appeals of health authorities to curb the spread of COVID-19. One attendee is upset as she can't find her son who attended steamy too. Others reprimanded police for their treatment of the hundreds of partygoers who stand accused of countering national moves to prevent the spread of a deadly virus. As police left, the attendees appeared to be retreating to the warehouse. Influencer Jordan Zess Boss, after being himself detained by the TTPS, issued this message to followers shortly after the exercise. How we like it? Steamy. Well, guess what? No more steam. Coronavirus is a serious virus. So all of we, we inside. Six inside. Okay. So no more zest parties. It's a serious virus. It's a lockdown. No parties. You see me? I inside a lockdown. Failure to comply with gathering regulations under the Public Health Ordinance attracts a fine of up to $50,000. Because there's insufficient holding space to comply with COVID regulations, the TTPS says the offenders will be charged via summons and it assures the names and addresses of suspected wrongdoers have been secured. Urvashi Tawari, Rupnarayan, TV6 News. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. Over in Antigua, the government there is considering a mix of incentives and the strengthening of revenue collection to improve its earnings from the weakened economic activities caused by the pandemic. ABS's Jessica Russell reports. As of September 2020, we have seen a reduction in revenue. Uh, uh, by $200 million. Uh, so for the first nine months of 2019, we collected $765 million. 
for the same nine-month period as in September 2020, we collected $562 million. Prime Minister Gaston Brown says the country will be lucky if it receives $750 million in revenue by the end of the year. The Prime Minister says it was initially projected the country would receive over a billion dollars in revenue, but the COVID-19 pandemic has changed that. Now the government is considering its options heading into 2021 to deal with the shortfall. We're looking at the possibility of reducing the rates for real estate rentals down to about $3 per square foot for the next 36 months. Reduction in the rate of heavy equipment rentals to include backhoes, trucks and so on, by about 33 and a third percent. Another option is improving tax collection. Strengthening collection of existing taxes, including property taxes, ensuring that all properties are captured in the property tax net uh, to enhance the collection of tax revenues generally, uh, to make sure too that the Airbnb properties and the uh, private uh, villa rentals that they pay the ABSD on the rentals. Land swaps and debt write-offs are also on the table. To... Um, Right off um, supplier credited debts up to 50%, especially unverifiable debts and those that have been involved with um, excessive invoicing. The Prime Minister says no decision has yet been made on what options will be pursued, but says the choices were discussed at last week's cabinet meeting. Jessica Russell, ABS News. Guyana will be an unstable place if the PVP continues to dismiss, disrespect, and denigrate honest, law-abiding citizens who are perceived to be APNU AFC supporters. Leader of the opposition, Joseph Harman, said. Wendell Badri of HGP Nightly News reports. Harman, in welcoming the Sheikh and his team to the country, noted that the gesture is a painful one since Ghana's situation is one of suffering and distress. Don't be fooled, Your Highness. Things are not normal in Guyana. Oppression is the order of the day. In the letter, the opposition leader posited to the Sheikh that although Islam is a way of life for him and his people and mandates equality for all mankind, the teaching of Islam is of no consequence to the Irfan Ali regime. Harman divulged to the Sheikh that since August 2nd, thousands of Guyanese have been under unrelenting attack and the political persecution at the hands of the state under the Irfan Ali regime. What's your highness? Do you know that since the 2nd of August 2020 that the Irfan Ali administration has been guilty of oppression of women and children? That non-political women have been fired from their jobs with no reasons given. Many of them are single parents and the only breadwinner in the homes. Crime, he said, has increased exponentially and the public safety is at an all-time low. Ghana has been experiencing unstable and uncertain times, Harman told the Sheikh. Women and children with nowhere else to live who are forced to squat due to the COVID-19 pandemic have had the land around them deliberately flooded, forcing them out of the only homes they know with no alternative. And these women and children have been shot at by the Guyana police force. The opposition leader further alluded to ethnic cleansing of the public service, where he submitted that close to 800 persons, mainly afro guyanese have been fired with no reason being given for their dismissal. He also alluded to unwarranted harassment and detention by police of members of the previous government at the instruction of the incumbent. He also posited that crime has increased exponentially, thereby creating an unstable investment climate. The PPP regime has refused to meet with the officials of the opposition to chart the way forward for a united Guyana. Harman also took the opportunity to outline the current political climate of the country, stating that there are two election petitions before the High Court, which is expected to be heard on November 24th, 25th, 30th and December 1st. He gave the reason behind the petitions as the March 2nd election being shrouded in fraud, a compromised voters list, among several other discrepancies and irregularities. He stated that his party expects that the court will vitiate the elections and Ghana will return to the polls within a short period of time. Wendell Badri, HGP Nightly News. <music> Thank you.
I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.